All right, hello, happy Thursday. It is Andrew Johnston. This week's topic is given to us by a subscriber who we love named Vanessa. Thank you very much, Vanessa. I won't say your last name because I don't know it. The topic this week is thinspiration. Well, um, no, actually, it's inspiration, not thinspiration, because I could use some thinspiration right now. After the weekend I had, I was at my parents' place back in my hometown of Brockville, a.k.a. Snackville, USA, I ate all the food. I ate all the food. This week's topic is inspiration, what inspires, and so I'm going to sort of take that on a few levels here. The first one is, I guess, what um, motivates. Motivate. What motivates me is purely looking around at my peer group or what I would perceive as my peer group and realizing uh, that less talented people than me are succeeding because they're actually doing the work. Basic bitches doing basic work because they're actually doing it. And then I'm like, ooh, just do the work. So that is something that motivates me. Um, I guess that sort of qualifies as inspiration. However, things that actually inspire me, it's all career oriented, I guess. Something that inspires me a lot is when I see people who have put in the work, people that I know, people whose talent I know and whose processes I know when I see them put in the work and it pay off. That I find very uh, inspiring and gratifying. And when I see them rise to the occasion, when I see people specifically who have put who have put in the work, in the trenches, whatever, and when an opportunity comes and they're able to rise to it, I really, really find that inspiring. And when that opportunity comes, they aren't earnest about it, and they're, they're, it's not sort of like they were waiting to exhale. Great movie. But they're, they're not like, oh, finally. Oh, I always knew. I always believed. They're not earnest about it. They're just like, they're like, okay, great, more work. And they get down to more work. Uh, two friends of mine, two local local comedians, Toronto comedian Sarah Hennessy, Tim Gilbert. Uh, that's sort of happening to them now. They're getting some momentum. And I think, like, what better people could that happen to? There, there are people who uh, always stayed completely on message to to what they set out to do. Uh, oh God, it sounds it sounds earnest to say that they didn't compromise. And I am not. I am not about earnestness. Okay, I am not about being earnest. There is no importance of being earnest. Earnest may have gone to camp, but I stayed right here. I also find it very inspiring, perhaps maybe at this juncture in time that I'm at, when people achieve success, um, maybe not later in life, but after that sort of too late 20-something window that we're all given kind of thing. Someone... And this is just random, but there's a song right now called The Fight Song by an artist named Rachel Platten. I'm not a fan of hers or that song per se, but it's a pop hit right now. And she's 34 years old. She's achieving pop music success at 34 years old, which might as well be breaking into pop music at 34 years old. She might as well be 90. She might as well be 90. I find that very inspiring when someone who is hung in there... Julie Klausner, another uh, example of this, someone I've been following quite um, closely throughout her career and a huge fan of, perhaps more than anyone else in comedy. I'm a, I'm a fan of Julie Klausner's. And, and to see, you know, she's got a series premiering in a matter of days, Difficult People with Billy Eichner. I, I, and just as a, as a fan of hers and as a follower of hers for so long and seeing all the content that she's put out and just being a complete, I'll say it, a disciple of hers. Uh... And just been like, when, when is the world going to wake up and realize how singular and amazing this lady is? And to see, to see that sort of crust at, at this juncture in her life, which is not to say that she's in her, you know, 50s or something like that. It's not like, we're not talking about Angela Lansbury or some shit like this. We're just, we're talking about after that sort of, you know, especially in comedy, there's this sort of thing where it just if it doesn't happen around 28 29 it's like well you know but no you just keep on creating you keep on staying on message to yourself and your point of view and crystallizing that and 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 that's really heartening heartening inspiring i'm really against saying the word inspiring i find that way too twee and and earnest for my liking but i guess there it is in terms of human interest stories i'm always very drawn to when someone or something is an exception to the rule. That is something that I find, for lack of a better word, inspiring. Like that 
little girl who survived a plane crash that her grandparents were like piloting. So it was just the three of them on board or something. And the plane went down and she was marooned basically in an autumn forest, walking around barefoot for a week and just living by her wits. And then she was discovered. Love it. Or that little girl who was that three-year-old girl who lived off of dried pasta and ketchup packets for a week while her deadbeat mom just left her in their apartment while she went partying. Survivors. Survivors. I, f I find that very against, not against all odds, not underdogs, but exceptions to the rules. Because other, they'd be fucking dead if this was, if this was how, you know, the story usually goes. But I find that inspiring. My comedic inspirations, which I guess is a thing. What inspires comedy for me are little, you know, minutiae. Typically, they're sort of tragic and and they're very bizarre. Uh, in recent memory, Ariana Grande licking the donut and saying that she hates America. I am obsessed with that. Tamara, or was it Tia? Maori for getting kicked out of a soul cycle class because she approached Charlize Theron and got in her face. And to hear Tamara or Tia tell it, she was like, well, I'm used to approaching other celebrities. Right. So I saw Charlize and I went up to her and I was like, hey. And the next day I was kicked out of the soul cycle class. I love that story so much. I love it. The Pitt Jolie family going to a Burbank Subway restaurant and Brad ordering two foot long meatball marineras, presumably one for him and one for the oldest Maddox. I love it. When Kirstie Alley got fat, I, I bought every magazine. When Sean Young heckled Marianne Cotillard at the 2010 DGA Awards in French. Kim Cattrall and her ex-husband Scatting in Latin. Yamakipiebo, cedere facebo, in dog Latin equals. Uje, sapa, sere! Sabat, sere! 